Hoxha. I am a journalist with Radio Free Asia's Uyghur Language Service, and I am a, U I am a U.S. citizen. Given the time, uh, I will not read my full statement, but uh, share my story. I grew up in Urumqi, the capital of Uyghur region in China, where I began my career in broadcast journalism before coming to United States in 2001 to work for Radio Free Asia. It was a great sacrifice to leave my homeland. I left behind a successful career as a television journalist. I also left my home, my parents, my family, and my friends. But coming here guaranteed me freedom, something that could never be realized in China. Being part of Radio Free Asia, which reports on the true daily news happening in the Uyghur region, was the dream of a lifetime. As I testify before you today, it grieves me to no end to say that my parents remained under threat and more than two dozen of my relatives in China are missing. Almost certainly held in called re-education camps run by Chinese government. I first heard my brother Kaisar Qiyum was detained at the end of September last year. Police had taken him when he was driving my mother to doctor's appointment leaving her alone in the car without any explanation. She waited for her son, who would never return. Kaisar was being held in one of the so-called re-education centers in Urumqi. We have not seen him since. In February, my parents, both elderly and suffering from life-threatening ailments, went missing. Not being able to talk to my mother and father or to learn how they were doing was almost too much to bear. I tried contacting other family, but could not reach them. And I learned in February that my aunts, cousins, their children, more than 20 people had been swept up by authorities in the same day. No one has confirmed where they are being held, but I strongly suspect they are in the camps, which sources say hold over more than like one million Uyghurs in the extremely poor conditions. My parents were held in medical facility in the detention camps, and they were allowed to live in March, maybe because of their poor health, Authorities has questioned my parents about me, where I am, and my work for an organization they claim is anti-China. Many of my Uyghur colleagues at the RFA share the same situation. Their families are also missing, detained, and jailed after receiving threats about their work at RFA. I hope and pray for my family to be let go and released. But I know, even if that happens, they will still live under constant threat. Despite these threats, I know, and my colleagues know, that we must continue because of the important role we have as a source of truth for the Uyghur people. I came to United States to realize a dream, a dream of a being able to tell the truth without fear. It may be difficult, but I will keep trying and I will never give up. Thank you so much. Let me first address those, and, and, and this is, is gonna deal with your story, Ms. Hoja, of those who say to us, and I've had people tell me this, um, Human rights is important, but we have to be pragmatic and can't raise it in every forum, can't talk about it all the time. And at the end of the day, 
you know, the horrible things happening all over the world. We can't tell other countries what to do all the time. We need to be focused on America and Americans. Your story is about America and Americans. You are a United States citizen. You work for Radio Free Asia. And you have testified here today that your brother, your elderly and infirm parents have been detained, that over 20 of your relatives, including aunts, cousins, children, have been detained. You've also testified here today, I believe, in your written testimony, you may have said it verbally as well, that you know of other colleagues that have done the same. So here we have the testimony of a United States citizen working in a journalistic capacity whose family in another country has been harassed, detained, in some cases without any contact with their families, not knowing exactly what's going on, because they don't like what you are saying in the United States. In the United States. A United States citizen's family is being detained, harassed, and harmed in another country as an effort to silence you. And it is a testament to your bravery and courage that you have not been silenced and that you appear here today. I wonder how many have been silenced and how many have chosen not to speak and who can blame them? Who wants to put their family through this? You don't have to name names, but I'm interested in you sharing with us, for the record, whether in fact your story is an isolated one or is there in fact more people who find themselves in, their circum in the circumstances you're in. Again, I leave it up to them to identify who they are and, and, and so forth. But is yours the only story or are other people going through the exact same thing you're facing right now? Other US citizens? Of course, there's um, even Chinese government right now put uh, the people to re-education camp who have a friend or family members outside of China. They feel they will influence them. That's why I, I don't know the number, but I believe everyone, every Uyghur have somebody in the family or friends in the camps right now. Every, you can ask any Uyghurs, any including my uh, five other colleagues in our office. And Rabia Kadir's here. Her sons, daughters, even grandchildren locked up. She doesn't know where they are, how they are. And we recently confirmed Dolkun Aysa's mother passed away in the re-education camps. So I wonder <laughs> what Evidence we have to prove again and again. So we've been trying to cover those darkness, the issues, more than one year. Because Chinese government, the Chen Chuanguo, using this policy harshly from beginning of last year. But we've been, like, for example, me, 17 years I've been releasing every day similar situations, similar human rights issues, abuses by Chinese. But <laughs> unfortunately, we are the only source. Radio Free Asia is the only voice to world to talk about ourselves. So is that enough? We don't know. And because of, I'm still here, I'm raising my voice because we don't have choice. We don't have any other people to talk, you know? So we are the hope. So I have to stand up. So I cannot give up. <laughs>